This is a slip chain. And the reason why it's called a choke chain the reason why it's called a choke chain is that if you don't have it on the right way, it's going to choke your dog. And I think that it is probably one of the most abused tools that there is in dog training other than food. Like as far as like types of collars that deliver pressure, I would say that the slip chain is the most commonly misused. And it's really not that difficult. Although, hang on. I do not send dogs home with slip chains. And the reason why is that it might take a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. Now, my dad, this was his favorite training type of collar was a slip chain. It has its advantages. One, if it's a longer type one, you can even use it as like a short leash. Just grab the ring. But the advantage to the slip is that it makes like a growling sound when it's used properly. And you deliver pressure with a quick snap. Now, if you don't have a quick snap down with a buckle collar, you're not going to be able to do it with a slip. So I just am hesitant to even consider... Um, sending a dog home with a slip because also you take it off the dog right after training and you put it on the dog during training so it's coming on and off and people you know don't know what they're doing and they forget that it has to go on one certain way and one certain way only or you choke the dog if you're not doing a quick snap it chokes the dog that's where it got that name choke chain it's a slip chain it's supposed to slip slips real fast makes a growling sound it's like that and you're done okay so it's a very effective tool and i'm using it with uh the vishla because i'm not getting what i want from the buckle buckle collar which it's a it's a bird dog so it's not a surprise but trying the the buckle collar but i got it i need the i need the vishla to be healing because dog training is a is sort of asymmetrical and that if you get them to do one thing that they're not doing well then they sort of like step up to bat with the other stuff so he's a shitty shitty healer so the, the owner had warned me about that he said yeah i need the dog to heal so i think healing is a thing that a lot of owners really don't get there's a lot of dog trainers out there <laughs> they um they think heel is on either side or just around you. You're dealing with a dog trainer that isn't training your dog to do a specific heel on the left-hand side. That's not a dog trainer. It's probably a dog whisperer. If you're dealing with somebody that's putting a head collar on your dog, you're not going to train the dog to do a proper heel that way. That's a passive method. Good luck. You know, good luck. This dog will be healing like a champ when he goes back. The other problem with um, the Vishla, uh, Lutzi, is that um, what, what, what he does is he's like, you try and walk him and he's just looking all around, right? Like, he's not paying attention. He needs to pay attention to the heel. So if the dog's head is turned and you're walking this way, hey, Dick, we're walking this way. You're going to trip over a log or something. He needs to get this together. So we're going to concentrate on this until the dog gets it. We're doing some other stuff, but there's gonna be a concentration on this heel because this is like, this typical bird dog crap. Comparing him to Tonka at that age, oh please, you know. Tonka when he was, say, um, six months old, you know, you would, I, would, I, would, I would give him a correction backwards, he'd stop for a second, lunge out. Correction, lunge out, this was like, Two seconds, he's lunging out. He's nothing like Tonka. This dog's older than six months, but even at Tonka at a year was just unbelievable to deal with. It's a very high drive, hyperactive dog. So this dog is a piece of cake. He will heal like a champ, no problem. But he does something similar to Tonka. Like say I took Tonka at a year old, and I did. I took him to a high traffic area. Um, 
He's not even close to tall. But I took him to Williamsburg, Brooklyn, around a bunch of people. Because Tonka was doing pretty good in one part of Brooklyn, but when I took him to a high traffic area, he was all over the place, looking at everybody. Really difficult to control. Um, I'm a professional, too. I'm saying this dog, Tonka was the most difficult dog I've ever known. I still have him, you know. At over 10 years of age, Tonka is more hyperactive than the puppy. It's the truth. Tonka, well, the puppy's the same way. Like, the puppy, the, the uh, Vishla, I had to feed the same amount as, like, uh, I was going to say Ike, but Gus the Labrador. And the reason for this is that the bird dogs are so freaking hyper that they just burn off calories. So he's getting like two chicken leg quarters a day. Tonka's getting that, but at this point he can put on a little bit of weight, you know, but it's, it's hard with the, the young bird dogs to even like, good luck getting them fat. Maybe on dog food, they'll get fat. But, um, you know, his metabolism will change. But he's doing, he's doing good. He's, he's a lot easier to deal with than Tonka was. But um, I should talk about this real quick about the amount of food that you give because it confuses people it depends on the dog you d don't look at the bag of dog food and you can't really do it that way like um if i just looked at the vishla i would think oh he could probably do like one leg quarter right because he's not that big but this is a growing dog he's a he's an active dog so he's gonna have to have two okay so you can't say like if you say how much does my dog eat should eat like i don't know your dog and you can't it's not really breed specific um you don't want to overfeed them you want your dog lean that's for sure obesity in pets is very common <clears throat> you mostly see that with food trained dogs and dogs that are on pet food um stop uh feeling guilt and feeding the dog because you feel guilt. If you feel so guilty, go work with your dog. You know, that might be a real good idea. Um, stop buying BarkBox. Your dog doesn't need treats, it needs to eat. It needs to eat a good, it needs to eat a, a, a healthy meal, not dog food, so it should be on raw diet. But you can't really, um, like, I certainly, if the Vishla was eight weeks old, I wouldn't be giving him two leg quarters because the Vishla would way too much for the dog to eat. Tax out of system and get enteritis. You don't want to overfeed your dog, and that's a real common thing with people. They overfeed. You can be err, err on the side of caution and, um, like, monitor the dog's weight. And that's what I'm doing with the Vishla. It's easy with the bird dogs because they're skinny. So you want to see a little rib, right? But you don't want to see too much rib. So say, it looks good right now, but say at um, two leg quarters should be sufficient. But let's say like in a week, I noticed that he's not, he's, gay, he's lost a little weight. What would I do? I'd add just a little bit more in because I don't want him to get diarrhea. So I might go to two and a half leg quarters. Err on the side of caution. Don't give your dog diarrhea. And um, all dogs are different. They have different uh, metabolisms. The bird dog, high metabolism. And also, it, it, the dog's working. So when they're working, they're gonna burn more calories too. So it's really sort of like, I was talking to um, Craig, and Craig has a 140 pound dog. And the 140, I said, well, how much does that, that monster eat? And the dog only eats two leg quarters. It's eating the same amount as the Vishla or Tonka. See the point? Different metabolism. So you can't really go on the, like the size of the dog. That's not really the way that it works. Every dog is individual. Metabolisms are individual. The breed of the dog, that plays a part. The age of the dog. See what I'm saying? You just, you, it's ridiculous to be asking this question. It's ridiculous that people don't understand how much to feed the dog. Like, let's say Merlin. It's a perfect example 
of like a dog. He has to be on pet food because he's um, he's allergic. He's allergic to uh, uh, chicken, so he's on a pork-based pet food. Now I have it down to like an exact science, meaning handfuls. But if I do another handful and a half, it sort of gives him the shits or something. You know, it's just like you can tell. So if you are feeding your dog too much, you got to get the dog in around it. So you're going to see sloppy poops and stuff. So really, you have to figure it out. Don't give them like, well, it's only a cup. You give them a cup more. It happened the other day. I don't know. Here, I'll give them a little extra, you know. And then I was bathing them on the day that I wasn't planning to bathe them. But it's okay. It's looking much better as far as grooming goes. So... With, with dog food, you have much less of a, a, a bias. You, you know, you, you have to be really careful not to overfeed them. That's very common that people overfeed the dog with pet food and you give the dog diarrhea. And remember, some dogs are like, look, am I fat? No, I've been skinny my whole life. Some dogs are skinny. You don't want a fat dog. Like the Vishla, how would you get that as fat as Gus the Labrador? You wouldn't because it's a different kind of breed. Merlin, Merlin looks like he would be big, right? He's not, man, those dogs are skinny. The Poodle, they are not a fat dog. Your Poodle should not be fat. One, because their bone structure is sort of like a Saluki or, or like a, a, a GSP. They're skinny. You don't want that extra weight on them. You should. Feel a little bone. Even on your Labrador, man, if you got a lab and it's fucking looks like a uh, Vienna sausage with toothpick legs, that's a fat dog. Now, with that said, Labradors do have a higher fat content. You know, it helps them keep them warm in cold water and stuff, but you don't want your lab super fat either. Man, I've seen dogs that are just so... I can think of some right now that I know, that are just so overweight, they look so unhealthy. I, when I had Tonka as a puppy, people say, why aren't you feeding that dog? He's a GSP, have you never seen a young GSP? The guy never stops working. Like if, if, you, if you have a dog like that, like it's common in GSPs and English, uh, English pointers, that the young ones are real skinny. If you try and put weight on that, that dog that they can't handle by overfeeding, you'll get diarrhea. They have a real high metabolism as they get older. It sort of slows down. Tonka starts gaining weight. But you do not want a fat dog. I'm going to say this again. It's up to you. You fix your dog, then you'll get your fat dog. If you want to put weight on your dog, fix it. Then your dog will look real unhealthy. They get lazy. Don't fix your dog. I was so happy to see the Vishla's not fixed, Merlin's not fixed. That makes your dog real unhealthy, real unlazy, real lazy. They get fat and lazy. No good. Let's go back to the slip chain. But that, it, I'm sorry, I just, like, people are always asking, how much do I feed my dog? I don't know your dog. They'll say, how much, how much do I feed my, like, 16-week-old uh, puppy? I don't even know the breed, idiot. You, you don't know how much to feed your dog? Err on the side of caution. Monitor its weight visually. If it's getting fat, puppies would have a tendency to be sort of like puppy-like. But when it's older, it's eight months, it should start looking more like an adult. Get rid of that baby fat. So the slip chain. This is an extremely useful tool. Like I said, I do not uh, give this to owners. I do not send dogs home with this, but I will train the Vishla with this to, because I will. Dogs heal on the left hand side. Okay, so you train the dog to heal on the left-hand side. If you have two dogs, they both heal on the left-hand side. It's not that hard. I have videos of five dogs healing on the left-hand side. If you're working with a dog trainer that has dogs all circled around them, that's not a really a dog trainer. That's a dog whisperer. That's bullshit, okay? All dogs heal on one side. doesn't matter if it's five 
or six. They all heal on the left-hand side. If you have one over here and over here, it ain't gonna work. Okay, and if they're all on the left-hand side, there's no jockeying for positions. It would be however it's set up. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Carlo Diaz. Okay, so appreciate that. So this is a slip chain, right? Now, you're going to want to practice with this before you put it on the dog. And you want to want to practice that the, the um, uh, uh, hang on, dude. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Um, if, if you take this and you can find some kind of post to put it on, so you can get used to, like, uh, like, like here, like maybe if you do something like this, you take this, how are we going to do this? There's no way to do this really. Um, well... Maybe that'll work. Let's move this down here. Because I, I want to sort of explain this. The problem is even if you know... Um, even if you know how to put the, the slip chain on, that the, 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 bit, the big problem really is that you, you're not snapping it. Like, people pull it. Like even like that's that's why I, I I have buckle collars on most of the dogs going home, and most of the owners have trouble with this. It's like it's like pulling teeth. Now, with that said, when I was five years old, my father was explaining shit to me. So I, I've had years to think about it. I've had years to practice it. But I mean, like some people do pick it up quicker than others. That's for sure. So let's say. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's try it. Okay, so the dog is sitting out in front of you, right? There's a the dog. The dog is this stick, right? That's its head. So I take the slip chain, and I look at it like this, and it looks like a pea. When I'm looking at it, it looks like a pea. That's the proper way for it to be. It's a pea. The dog heels on the left-hand side. You look at it. It's a pea. You take it. You slip it over the dog's head, right? So the, I don't know if this is gonna work. It isn't, of course. But what you need to practice is like, see, it's not gonna work. Um, well, it's not gonna work. But what it is, is it's a quick, like it's loose, and then it's like this. It's loose, and then it's like this, right? That's, that would be for, like, Sid. But say you're walking down the street with your dog, right? And it's not healing. It's going ahead of you. It's backwards like this, but you keep walking when you do it. So it's something like this. It'd be like this, right? It's not, it's not this. See how I pulled the stick out? It's not that. It's not a tug. It's a quick snap. That's all it is. It's snap, release, snap, release, snap, release. So you have to get in the in the, the hang of it. You gotta figure out some way to do, to practice this. And um, looking for something. Well, anyway, maybe you can figure something out. But the, the point that I'm trying to make is if you don't, you know, get used to doing that action with it, you're, and you're doing this, that's, this, that's not it, it's like this. It's up, back, right? So it's loose, or it's it's like, if the dog's going forward, it's back like this and forward. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's loose, but the dog starts going forward, it starts getting tight, before it gets real tight, it's backwards, right? So it slips, it slips, and it makes a growling sound when it slips. It's a very effective tool. It is. It's a very effective tool. But if you put it on the dog, listen up. Not like a pea, right? Let me show you. So, see, if, if we're looking at it, the dog's sitting over there, right? 
and you're looking at this, right, this, this can sort of make a P, right? That's the proper way. Your dog's on the left-hand side, it makes a P. If you do it like this, that's not a P. That is not a P. You put this over the dog's head like this, you know what happens? It chokes the dog, it gets stuck. It gets stuck. Don't do it. Let's see if this slips over my head. It does. Another thing, so you're walking with the dog. Wait a minute, is this on the left hand, right, wrong side? That's a P. So, okay. So I would be the dog, so I'd go like this, right? Okay. So, I don't know if this is right. So, it's like this, right? So it's really hard to do on me. I'm gonna have to go get a dog, right? It's not working, because I'm, I can't see what I'm doing. I don't know if it's backwards or not. The other thing, I'll go get a dog. Let me go get a dog. You want me to go get a dog? Let me go get the Vishla. Lutzi's a pain in the ass. Let's go get Lutzi. Hang on. But it'll be easier to explain everything, okay? It's a very useful tool. It does not choke the dog. It should not be choking the dog ever. Ever. This is not that hard. Remember, the dog's on the left-hand side. You're looking at it. It looks like a pea. Slip it over the dog's head. Let me go get Lutzi. I'll show you a couple other things. Let's see, let's see. No, heel. No, here. You want to pee on that? Hurry, hurry, go potty. Go on, hurry, hurry, go potty. Hang on, go over here, pee on this. Hang on. Hurry, hurry, go potty. Your dog needs to know, have a potty command to learn to know heel, too, by the way. So, this is Lutzi. Lutzi, like I was like thinking about it yesterday, I'm like, man, maybe I should try to slip with him. I need to like move this along quicker. No, Lutzi, here, heel, come on. Sit, no, Lutzi, sit. No, sit. So this is on the right, right side. Now, if your slip collar goes down here, right, it can have a tendency to get caught up. So you've got to refresh the collar. You grab the collar, right, so that falls and then it's like that. See how that slips? That's what you want. 
That's what you want. If it goes on the other way, it doesn't slip. It's just stuck and just chokes the dog. So the whole the whole point of the, the slip chain is that it will, um, you have it loose, and when the dog goes forward, then you give a correction like that real quick, but it's like you loosen up right away. So it's quick. It's not, it's not, a, it's not this. It's not a tug. I say this to people all the time, even with the buckle collar. It's just always a quick snap. Sort of needs to be refreshed. Now, one thing about this is when you start using this, your dog might lose a little hair. So don't worry about it. It's like a wear mark. It like cuts the hair. It's nothing. It'll grow back. It's a training collar anyway. So here, let's do this. Here, we'll use, we'll use, we'll use this collar and I'll walk right here. Let's see. Come on, dude. So I really, I, I, I was like, man, I gotta do something. I gotta get this guy going. Here, no, heel. No. Let's see here. No, here, heel. No, quit snipping, dude. Knock it off. Don't let your dog do that. Don't let him track. That's gonna be a correction upwards. Here, heel. No, hang on not a good area to do this but hang on I'm not doing this shit. Come on, heel. Jesus Christ. No! No! We're gonna go down to the road because he's sniffing too much here. There's a lot of bunnies. Let's see if we can get, get him going down here. This is sort of not what I wanted. He did better this morning, that's for sure. No bunnies down here, let's see. So I'll go from here. It's a telephone pole, we'll work him doing heel. Okay? No, heel, damn it. Let's see. No, heel. Notice how he's stopping now? That's what I want. Inside turn. No. Heel. Heel. No. See where my hand is? No, heel. Heel. No. No heel. Good. No heel. Heel. Watch what I do. Watch this. Watch how I get down low. No heel. Keep walking. Don't stop. Now I'm coming around the corner. No heel. He's spinning better. That's good. Heel. Come on, buddy. Good boy, let's see. No. Here, heel. Heel. 
much better. No heel? No. Looking around like that, like no. He needs to be paying attention. It's a it's a problem. Here, heel. This bird's over there. He needs to leave him alone. That's one of the things that the owner said was it's a problem. Is I guess lots of been chasing birds and stuff. Here. And when when he chases birds, he's not listening to the owner. Now when I get down here, I'm saying no heel. So I know he's going to screw up. No, heel! No! Bump him with my leg. Muscle memory. There hasn't been enough of it. No, heel. No. No. Back up. Back up right here. Back up. Now we do it in this one area. It helps the dog. It makes it easier on the dog. Don't think you're gonna teach the dog to heal on a walk. It just isn't gonna happen. Let's leave it alone. Come on. Come on. No, heel. Bumping him with my leg. Ow! Watch me, dude. I'm old. Heel. Heel, dude. Back up. He's not bummed out. Somebody's crying, oh, you're being mean to him. He's not bummed out. Here, heel. Heel. at a bird down there. I don't care if he looks, but he better not like really start getting out of heel. No! Heel. I'll do a turn here and you can see what I'm doing with my legs. Now we just started doing this. Next week I'll be doing this a lot better. Be le no, heel. Be less corrections. Less bumping with my leg. No. No, heel. Let's see. Heel. No! Heel! No. Gets more relaxed, I can switch to this arm. Hey! So I'm gonna reposition my leash. No heel.
like uh, these bird dogs are um, sort of hardwired to be dominant. So that sort of naturally sort of disrespectful at first. Um, he's really typical of a bird dog. So here, say he's just looking off. Sit. No, sit. He's supposed to be uh, paying attention to the handler. Here, let's move out of the shade. Here. here. So that would be a t like typical length right now of a, um, if I'm teaching a dog. Like right now for him, like I'm gonna put him up. We've done heel twice so far today. Similar length, leave it, come on. No. And he's just like, fuck it, I'm gonna smell it. He needs to pay attention. Anytime he starts tracking, it's gonna be a correction downward or upward. Hang on, I'll be right back. Heel. You go boy too. Come here, you'll get it. No, sit. Here I come. Now, um, as, as far as teaching your dog to heal goes, this is real important what I'm about to say. So listen up. You, you want to teach your dog to heal, all right? And you go out there and you're like, God, this is hard, right? You're damn right it is, you know? And I'll tell you something, you ain't gonna teach him to heal. That dog did not learn to heal with these two lessons today or the lessons I did before. So I'm saying this and I cannot express this enough. We will do this for miles and miles in one area. Day after day, and then the dog starts getting it. The dog's better than he was. But it's a bird dog, and it's just like, that's it. You're going to teach the, a dog to heal. It's going to, you know, it's going to take some work. He didn't have an e-collar on, I'll tell you that. There's no point right now. The physical correction is the thing that really gets a dog. You know, the, the e-collar has its, its advantages, but if you use it wrong, you're just going to screw it up. If you use it too high, you're just going to make it more difficult for the dog. That's not, you're not gonna teach the dog to do this. Um, you know, we'll, we'll bring in an e-collar at some point, but that's not gonna get the dog to, to heal. And don't be unrealistic. Do not take the dog on a walk and think, oh, I'm going to try and get the dog to heal while it's going on a walk. No, you do it in one area back and forth. That makes it easy on the dog. Why one area? Because it makes it easier for the dog to learn because the dog understands that when it when it's going to this area that's what we're gonna do see what I'm saying and it's muscle memory so if you do it in the same proximity each time and even set up like if you want to you got a traffic cone or a traffic cone and you're circling around the traffic cone that even makes it easier so you want, you want to train your dog in the same place every day until it starts getting it. And then you take the dog to a different area and then you do the same thing. And when you go to the different area, it's going to be difficult again for the dog and the dog's going to screw up. But you won't have to do it in that one area as long as you did it in the other area. You practice it there and then you go someplace else and practice it. See what I'm saying? Like So the dog really starts understanding that 
Okay, we're going here. We know, I know what I'm going to do. Like if I take it to the field, the dog knows, I'm going to do the dummy launcher. So you start building up muscle memory. You cannot do it by taking the dog on a walk. You want to pick, just depending on the dog, anywhere from 10 to 15 feet to 20 feet of area that you're just walking back and forth. And the, also the advantage to this is that you have your con the dog in a more controlled environment. So if you're going on a walk, there's all this stuff going on. I already have a dog that's like constantly doing this, right, with birds. So if you take it to like a high traffic area, you know, that causes problems. Listen, nobody has Tonka. So if I can train Tonka to do a wicked heel, you got to be able to train your dog to do a wicked heel, okay? So it just takes time and muscle memory, and it ain't going to happen the first time. And it's a lot of walking. So I got bad hip and bad knees, but I still got to do it. It's my job. So I was looking for Celebrex this morning. I'm like, it's going to tear me up. And each time you do a correction, sort of, you know, it gets my hip a little bit. My knees will start hurting. Whatever, I'm not complaining. It could be worse. I could be working in Walmart, huh? With people, I'd rather work with dogs. But you really, you, you have to, uh, whether you're using a slip chain or, you know, whatever. And let me tell you something while we're on the subject of a slip chain. This is not dummy proof. This is why I do not send this home with dogs. And this is a type of training collar. You use it when you're training the dog. We're going to get that dog on a buckle collar soon. Pressure is lifted upon compliancy. Did you hear what I said? You lift pressure with compliancy. Once the dog sits, you're not, you no, know, there's no more pressure, right? Well, the same thing's true with the collar. When the dog starts functioning, you can switch into a regular collar. You might start using some type of pressure, like you use a correction with a buckle collar, but this is a collar that delivers a little bit more pressure, meaning it makes a sound, right? Makes that sound. It doesn't choke the dog if it's used properly. It only chokes the dog if you have it on the wrong way. So if the dog heels on the left-hand side, which it should, you make it look like a P to you and you slip it over the dog's head should function great. You might have to refresh the collar if it's a little too high or a little too on that side, but that's how you use one of these. It's an effective tool. There's other things that are uh, more uh, dummy proof, like a um, Starmark collar delivers pressure. That is sort of looks like a plastic pinch or prong collar. It's like that, almost, you know, you can't really tell it's plastic, so, you know, you don't run into nuts telling, telling you you're cruel for using a, a, a prong collar. Now, prong collars, I have no problem with those, but they are a training collar, and use them to train the dog. If you have a prong collar on your dog all the time, there's something wrong. Your dog isn't properly trained. Hi, Sparrow. How you doing? You doing good? Oh, hey, guys. How you doing? Um, so it doesn't really make any sense. It means you're having trouble with your dog. If you have a leash with knots in it, you're having trouble with your dog. Anytime I see that, I'm like, oh, you're trying to like, you need to finesse the dog. So out there, I'm teaching the dog that it must listen to my voice. When I say no, you got to stop. He's starting to pick this up. And, um, you know, he has to turn when I turn but they don't understand it right away. That's why when I'm making the turn, I'm saying, no, heal. Because I know that the dog's gonna screw up. So I'm sort of preemptive with it. I know he's gonna, he's not, he doesn't have it. There's not enough mus muscle memory. People say, you're saying no, but the dog's doing it. Yeah, well, I know where the dog's mind is going and I know he's gonna screw up. So I'm saying no. I see the dog doing one little thing. I'm like, no. You know, if I see the dog turn its head, looking at the cat, crossing the road, I'm thinking, no, you don't go after that cat. People don't get it, they, you know, it's just, they don't get it. People are dummies.
When it comes to dogs, you could have somebody with a 155 IQ that's not going to get dog training, but thinks that they're going to get it. Oh, I'm smart. I'm a computer programmer. I went to Yale. You know, they can't, they, that doesn't mean that they're going to be able to do this. Um, I don't know. But the, the prong collars, I got no problems with them. The one advantage to the prong collar is that it does, it goes around the whole circumference of the neck. So once again, like, if you're using them properly, you're not going to hurt the dog's neck. It just kind of like tightens up real quick. Same thing with a star mark collar. But if you're going down the street and the uh, thing's engaged, you're an idiot. You don't know how to use it. It's one quick snap. It's the same thing as this. It's always a quick snap, right? That's it. I found out who got COVID from my father-in-law's oncology partner was sitting next to him that night. No shit. And do we know what COVID it is? Do, do you know what strain it is? Young Hillsby, Pharma, pharmacist general, the pharmacist general. Um, like a, I like a prong color. I feel like I have better, com sure. Yeah, it was, I don't know. I don't know why people have such problems with it, the way that it looks or something. I'm like, you don't even understand it. Plenty of smart people aren't rich. Plenty of people aren't rich, go figure. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's a lot of people that are smart that aren't rich. Um, first night at the house went well. Good. We think it's Omicron. Now, if it's not, it's, it's B2, right? How you, uh, I know, I know what they gave me to treat. Pred and D3. Vitamin D3. Really? They gave you D3? Vitamin D3. Did, maybe they think that you have a vitamin D deficiency. We just bought vitamin D at the store the other day. I did mega doses that the doctor gave me last year, like a prescription. Um, I try and take them. I, I think... I, don't, I was looking for them. Maybe Destiny has them in a room or something, but I, I'll take D3. Uh, pop a balloon with it. It's basic. Yeah. Interesting. I guess. Huh. Well, do you feel any better? Hillsby? It's too early to tell, probably, right? Pred to take down inflammation, I guess. Be right back. I need to call my mom. It, it's it's spring here. It is. What else about heal? Anytime, you, you just do it in one certain area until the dog starts getting it. There are tons of studies that people who have catastrophic uh, cases all have D3 deficiency. Is that right? No shit. No shit. D, D3 deficiency is like really common where there's not a lot of, you know, like it's winter and people stay inside. Interesting. Huh. See, I, I, I go outside even in the winter, so I'm getting some D3. I, I'm like, but I'm not getting as much as I do in the summer, that's for sure. I'll take some more. Now, uh, European protocols that involve five then. I see. Man, I, uh, what, what, what was the, uh, my doctor had me on D3 for three weeks, maybe, at a real high dose. I thought it was 50,000 or something. Does that sound right? That's why it's worse with people with dark skin tones. Oh, is that right? That makes sense, because it's harder for them to soak up D3 in the winter time. Gotcha. That's right. And when you get a tan, you produce less D3. Huh. That makes sense. That's interesting. Thanks, Hillsby. 
You're a wealth of knowledge. That's great. I didn't, I didn't know that. Huh. D3, huh. Maybe I'll get another bottle so that I don't, I don't have to ask Destiny where the other one is. She, she probably needs to take it worse than me. She's more of a houseplant for sure. You know, like I'm out right now, she's not. You, you know what I mean? Like, she'll just work on art in a room. She did that in Florida, too, except she had a job doing something that was outside, but... You got you, D3. I'm on 10,000 IUs of D3 for two days and five to... I see. Okay. So you can't, you can't buy 10,000 at a... You, that's a prescription dose, correct? How long does D3, it's fat soluble, how long does it stay in your body, do you know? Not months, right? Come on back, pharmacist girl. That's, um, I take vitamin D because of this move can affect these. Oh, interesting. Yes, but you can take over the counter two thousand. Let me let me go get the D three. Let's let's see what it is. Hang on. Do it in a minute. Okay, um, all right. So this is um, vitamin D3, a thousand, right? So you're saying like taking, you could take two of these twice, uh, two of these once a day. That's what I did yesterday. But the reason why they give you the higher dose, um, my doctor said that after she gave me the mega doses that I was going to go down to 1,000 milligrams a day, right? But then I did it for a while and then I forgot. Do you know, um, Hillsby, do you have any idea how long D3 stays in the body or is it just depends on the person? I know it's fat soluble, so that's, that's why you don't give... Um, calcium that has D3 in it because that's human level and it stores up in your dog and make them real sick. Come on, pharmacist girl. How long does it stay in your body? I wrote it up to it. Okay, hang on. Once you build it up in your system, it takes about a month before levels start dropping. Okay, mine have already dropped. It accumulates over time and you just take maintenance doses. Roger that. My D levels are always low year round. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Huh. Okay, I get you. Is 
instrument they were given. Hang on, let me see what they gave me. You can take 2,000. 10,000 D3 for two days and 5,000 for two weeks. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, um, oh, it's low thyroid. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Um, I gotta, I gotta take some pictures. Of, we're gonna go take pictures of Destiny in the woods. So, um, anyway, I'll see you in a bit. I'm sure I'll live stream later. Thanks for the info.